Howdy, everyone. All right, so the next step for me working on these baffles is to... Hold on, I'll come back to that picture here in a minute. So now I am going to do the filler pieces that go in these corners, the outside lower corners of the baffles. There's a curved piece that gets put in here, and there's another curved piece that gets put in on this side here. And the idea is to smooth the transition. So this is, this is my lower cowling here. That piece is supposed to smooth the transition from the outer edge of the inlet here on both sides. Uh, it's supposed to smooth it from the transition from this corner of the cowling to the inside corner or the outside corner, I guess, of the baffle. And that's on both ends or both sides of the cowling. So again, those gusset filler pieces go in the outside corners here on both, both uh, inlets. So my cowling is an RV7 cowling, and the uh, baffle set that I bought was for an RV7 with the uh, with a, a zero three sixty type of engine. But what I found was the RV14 baffles have these nice templates associated with it. So if I scroll up here real quick. So this is the cowling baffles for the RV14. You can see here it's RV14 baffles. And you can see this is an angle valve engine. The baffles are a little bit different. It's got a front mounted governor, which is totally different than my engine. I was just looking through this to get ideas on how I might want to uh, make my baffles. There's some, uh, there's some information here. As far as um, it comes with pieces, parts to do the um, to do the snorkel, the snorkel part of the cowling or the uh, baffles is part of the RV14 baffle kit. But of course, I didn't have this because I didn't order this particular baffle set. It's too different than what I'm doing. So anywho, at the end of this, near the end here, here's where they start to talk about using the, uh, the templates and fitting them into the corners. Here's another one here. They're bending the template and fitting it into the corner. And then they provide a one-to-one -one scale drawing for the gussets here. So I decided to give that a shot. So that's what I'm working on now. Um, this is the template that I've produced from the drawing. And then I've transferred this onto my piece of aluminum. I am now going to clean this up and uh, try to bend it like the instructions tell you to bend it and see if I can get it to fit the front curve of the bottom baffle and then lay into the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, get it to contour to the outer corner of the cowling and then get it to transition this corner as well. So this is, this is the exact template from the drawing and you can see that it is long enough here. It's long enough and it's wide enough down at the bottom to do the curve. The shape at this point is not that important. I just wanted to get a piece of aluminum big enough that will span inside here correctly and will also um, match the curve. Actually, I think this needs to go this way. Yeah, this makes more sense. I don't want to bend this up too much because I, I might have to reuse it, but you get the idea, right? This is going to lay in here somehow eventually and do that curve so anywho i'm going to start with this see what uh i think this might be just a tad just a smidge maybe too big which is great i'd rather have it too big to start with i'm going to start with this and uh see if i can get the original bends in here to get it, get it curved and then i can 
I can also I can always cut off this end and this end as needed to get it to fit. So I'm going to start bending this in a vise, just like the instructions uh, say you should do it, and see what happens. Here is my vise setup for bending this uh, this transition piece gusset uh, from the uh, front cowling inlet, the bottom cowling inlet to the uh, baffles. It's just a couple of uh, simple aluminum angles. When you read the instructions. Again, this is reading off of the RV14 baffle kit instructions. They say that you want a nice sharp corner. Uh, of course, it needs to be smooth so it doesn't gouge the aluminum. And they do recommend aluminum angle uh, as your clamping device. And here is the finished piece. Uh, the black lines have been worn off because I've been handling it. But... Um, Again, just following the written instructions, this is the first time I've done it. The individual lines are numbered, and you basically follow the numbers. So number one is in the middle. You do that bend first. You work your way out. I think it's one through six. And then you flip it over, and then you do seven, eight, nine, ten in order. And you bend, they say roughly 10 degrees. I don't know, I just took a wild guess. I had actually overbent this, which is what I wanted, because it's easier. I think it's easier to overbend it and then unbend it a little bit. Overbend it and then relax the bend, which is kind of what you want to do anyway. You want to take that stress back out of the aluminum by slightly unbending it. So this was my first attempt, and it's a keeper. I was very surprised. So again, you just clamp it in the vise along those lines, starting in the middle. And then I just used a wood block and a hammer to bend it on that line ever so slightly. And then you go to the next line, bend it, go to the next line, bend it, go to the next line, bend it, and then flip it over to do the other ones and do the same thing. This was overbent, and then it was just a matter of laying it on the baffle real time and then getting it, shaping it so that it would lay correctly in the baffle. And of course, you want both sides, this side and this bottom piece, to lay flat without any real issue. Kind of like that. Of course, I know my fingers are in the way. All right. Bonus. So again, the object is to get it to lay correctly. There, I think my fingers are out of the way now. So I have it up against the left wall here and it lays flat here on the bottom as well. Something like that. And then the curve, this front edge curve, should match roughly the curve on the uh, inlet. So you can see I've got I've got it pretty close. You know, it all depends on how you hold it. This is actually going to be underneath. Let me come around here. So this needs to fit the contour of the inlet, something like that. Of course, this is going to be cut short here where my thumb is. Because this does not, obviously it doesn't sit on top and it does not sit underneath. It actually sits here basically in line with the baffle but you want to get this curve close which is what I've got now you can, you can see here that that's pretty good now what I'm going to do at this point is I think I will I will go ahead and attach this side piece to this bottom piece. I want to put the, the cowling back on to make sure that this piece left and right is pos positioned correctly and this piece up and down is positioned correctly. I can change this left and right by where I drill the holes here. 
along this bottom, this piece comes down and it bends underneath. There's a flange here. So I can position this where I need it left and right and then determine where to put the holes through here. This can be positioned up and down a little bit just by increasing or decreasing the bend here. If I bend this up, obviously this is going to push this up. After I get those verified, I'm going to drill and Clico these two pieces together here. And then I will probably drill and Clico this top flange to the side here. And then any adjustments that I need to make to this curve to get it to play nice with the cowling, I'll do after I have this somewhat attached. Because I need to anchor this. I can't make any further adjustments really because this is all over the place. I need to anchor at least one side of it and then work the other side to get the curve correct. And then at that point, after I have it bent correctly and positioned, I'll just come back and lop off the extra pieces, right? So this front edge here needs to stay like it is. So anything sticking beyond the edge of this front baffle area will get lopped off just like you see here. This will just get cut. So that's kind of my plan. So let me work through this a little bit and I will talk to you guys later.